On this episode of UTR, we heat things up and celebrate summer in Michigan, UTR style. We'll golf at the Gales, eat Silver Beach pizza, go camping in Pinckney, and see some classic vessels in Hessel. Heck, we'll even eat some cheeseburgers in Caseville. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to summer. Along the way is where we find the unexpected. Along the way is where we take in the scenery, and often where we have the most fun. Sure, along the way can be the place we stop to fill up or grab a bite to eat, but in Michigan, along the way becomes the place we've been longing for, because enjoying the journey is always pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. You know, Michigan truly is a four-season state, and there's more to see and do here than you can shake a calendar at. Ah, but if summer's your thing, your choices are endless, which is why we're calling this episode Endless Summer. Look, I'm even on a beach. Yep, when it comes to summer, Michigan is a warm weather wonderland with more ways to unwind on the waterfront than almost anywhere else in the nation. Heck, Michigan has the longest freshwater coastline in the entire United States, which means no sharks. <laughs> Bonus. Oh boy. Let's face it, we've got some sensational summer selections here in Michigan. There's tons of outdoor eating options available, and our awesome cities and towns are even more wonderful and walkable when it's warm. So if you're really more of a land lover than a beach bum, Michigan's got your bum covered with plenty of stuff to do on high ground. And speaking of the ground, here's some on the sunrise side with little holes all over it. Lumberyard. That's right, if you want to play a round of golf the way the Scottish and old Tom Morris intended, you gotta come here. Ah, but first things first, time for some TV magic. Ah, that's better, I think. Well, if you're still wondering where here is, we're at the Lakewood Shores Resort in Oscoda, and the course of which I speak is known as the Gales, a golf experience that recreates the look and feel of the famed seaside courses of Scotland. And speaking of look and feel, I felt it was time to look for someone to help me negotiate this classic course. Craig Peters is the GM here at Lakewood, and after calculating my handicap for an hour on an abacus, we commandeered a cart and got things started. So my producer Eric told me that if I was going to play this style of golf that I had to dress appropriately. Uh, uh, is, this, is this right? You look fantastic. <laughs> okay. I notice I'm the only one dressed this way on the entire course. Well, you know, you're the only one with class. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You bet. Now, Lakewood Shores, you've got three courses here, right? Correct. Right. And all beautiful. But what is different about the Gales? from any other course. The Gales, the whole concept behind the Gales was to recreate um, those courses along the coast of Scotland, kind of right. like the St. Andrews, Carnoustie's, Troons, and so on. Right. Uh, there's really nothing like it, especially when we built this back in the early 90s. You know, it is quite a special course. I mean, you're gonna see double greens, sod face bunkers. You're gonna find them right in the middle of the fairway. Most of them you're not gonna see. Right, I was gonna ask you about the double greens. Is that just to make you twice as frustrated <laughs> with your game? Why are there two? holes on one single green. Well, when they built the courses uh, along the coast in Scotland, you know, they, they were limited for land. So they'd have eight, nine holes go out, nine holes come back in. So they shared the green, so they just didn't have that much terrain to work with. Now, did the Scottish also invent liquid scotch to help you with the frustration that you have when you're done playing? Well, if they didn't, they, they should have. <laughs> 
And this is actually an award-winning course. It is. Uh, back when it opened in uh, 93, it was rated best new resort course in the United States, which wow. we're extremely proud of. I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot of great courses, not only in Michigan, but the United States itself. So some we're extremely proud of, but it, it's a fantastic course. Well, the neat thing is, like you said, there are so many courses in Michigan, but there's no other course like this. Correct. It gives you a chance to go golf the way they actually do in Scotland, and you don't have to buy an airplane ticket, you don't have to get your it's passport exactly updated. Right. I mean, it's just so much easier. It is. It's, it's just a lot of fun because it gives you a very different look than what you typically see, whether it, you're up north in Michigan or downstate. So you guys are just north of Oscoda. Correct. Right? And you've got everything actually on the grounds here that guys need. They want to come up here and play golf, guys or girls. Yes. Yes. We have, um, have on-site lodging. We can sleep up to 304 people. We've got hotel style units, one and two bedroom suites, and suites with jacuzzis. And you've got the Gales, which is yes. exceptional. Can you tell I'm channeling my inner Tom Morris? Yes, definitely. Yeah, if he found out I was channeling him, he would roll over in his grave because I don't know if he knew how little I know about golf. <laughs> That's okay, you're doing extremely well. well. At least I look the part, at least hey, I look good. Exactly, hey, it's yeah. about how you look, not how you play, right? Yeah. And the way I play, I will need some of that the liquid scotch <laughs> um, to perhaps uh, drown my sorrows. Well, that's okay, we can take care of you there. Golf at the Gales and the Lakewood Shores Resort was an absolute classic blast. Craig was cordial, the weather was wonderful, and it proved two very important things. One, we have hidden treasures around every corner on Michigan's Sunrise side. And B, I'm a bad golfer no matter what continent I'm on, but at least I got a free bowl of soup with this hat. <laughs> Okay, old Tommy Morris, help me out. Ah, whoa! Is this the right way? Well, this is UTR, which means, of course, it's time to eat. So we're gonna head to Lake Michigan to a little town called St. Joseph, get some chow. Hey guys, are they seeing any of this? No, no, it's good. Okay. You know, a lot of things inspire people to start their own business, but here's one that was inspired by a frosty cold adult malted beverage. I'll drink to that. Silver Beach Pizza is the place to go in St. Joe for great people, atmosphere, pizza, and a frosty cold adult malted beverage called a schooner. Oh yeah, and if you need to catch a train, this place also happens to be a real working Amtrak station. All aboard! Now, when he's not busy riding the Silver Beach carousel with me and Jill, David Costas holds down the fort at St. Joseph's most prominent Parkside Pizza party place. Is it true that your dad started this place over a couple of beers just like this? Yeah, that's the story. <laughs> it was uh, actually in, in Hawaii on the Big Island. They loved to go there for vacation, and I guess the bartender pulled out a couple of these mugs, and the froth was rolling off the sides, and it's when they decided they wanted to open a restaurant to serve beer in them. That's what I read yeah. the story. This your dad and his buddy had a couple of great beers. Said, Let's yeah. open a place that serves great beers. And they're like, well, we have to have food too. Yeah, yeah. So they thought, well, how about pizza? So yeah, we had a restaurant lease and, and no food, so it uh, it worked out. And these are called schooners. Called schooners, yep. And they're just they come in an extremely frosted glass. Yes, we've spent a lot of money on the system to keep them cold. There's about 500 in rotation. How long has this place been a, a train station? 40s, Since the maybe. 40s. Maybe earlier, could well, be wrong. When did your dad turn it into a funky, cool restaurant with beer? Uh, we are going on nine years in August. You couldn't ask for a more beautiful location. I mean, you've got the train pulling up, you've got the beach right in front of you, oh, there's yeah. families outside playing, there's the splash pad out there. It's a perfect place for a business. It is a perfect place. All this wasn't always here. Uh, this used to just be a field. You know, the carousel wasn't over there, so everything kind of fell into place nicely around the restaurant. It must be neat working here because your dad started the place. What's the most rewarding thing for you? Uh, really around here, it's it's nice being such a big part of the community. Just kind of knowing everybody. We take part in a lot of fundraisers. We feel like we're very involved in the community and uh, that's it. I really love this town. Then suddenly the train pulled in, the place filled up, and the love for Silver Beach Pizza was everywhere. What brings you here today? The beer, the pizza, or the train? The pizza. It's got to be the pizza. Oh, it's the pizza. Pizza all the way. We started coming here about two months ago and fell in love with it. We try to get here about once a week. Great food, close to the beach. What more could you want? 
So you came here all the way from Colorado for the pizza? Absolutely, it's the best pizza east of the Continental Divide. You know, the location's great, but I think uh, you could have an average pizza if you wanted to, but the fact that the food is great and the location is great is like a like a double threat, I think. Well, speaking of double threats, what about the beer? That makes it a triple threat. <laughs> We've lived here for three years. It's a great place to bring people to enjoy the atmosphere. I love the food. Is it too close to the beach? Do you ever get sand in your pizza? Not thus far. Even if half of your family didn't work here, would you love this place still? Oh my god, yeah. Pizza's the best. It's the food, it's the service. Look around. It's a gem. We don't even go to the beach. We come here. I won't tell the beach. It's okay. <laughs> so, I understand something very special just happened. Yes, it did. <laughs> what? what? We got engaged. Oh, I thought you ordered the Meat Lover's Pizza. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Meat Lover's Pizza is the best. <laughs> let's see a big hug. Come on, let's see you do it. Like you like each other. Very nice. <laughs> so whether you drive, take the train, or even swim to shore, Silver Beach Pizza will faithfully fulfill all your carbohydrate needs. And not only did I get a frosty cold schooner, I got my own custom t-shirt, too. Bonus. Hey you guys, what's up with this? You want to put that back? Oh, that's better. Well now it's time to wander the earth like cane and kung fu at a Michigan State Park. And we picked a great one for you. Anybody ever tell you to go take a hike? It happens to me all the time. So I decided to do something about it. The Pinckney Recreation Area is a hiker's paradise in southeast lower Michigan that offers mile after mile of wonderful wilderness and cozy campsites. If you're on the lookout for a place to get away from it all that's not all that far away, this is a state park you need to peruse. But before I take a hike, so to speak, I'd better check in with park manager Chuck Dennison. I'm pretty impressed. I looked at a map, and you could probably see this park from outer space. It's that big. This is a large park. It's 11,000 acres, two counties, and four townships. So most of the park property is in Washtenaw County. Some of it's in Livingston County. And you've got how many lakes are in this place? Because I looked at the map and I lost count. Well, from the glaciers coming through here, there's 20 named lakes in the park, and there's 10 boat launches to access those lakes. Well, that's what's so neat about this place is you're with an hour and a half of 80% of Michigan's population in right. southern Michigan. And to have this kind of wilderness right in your doorstep and in your backyard is incredible. Yeah, well, you're right. Most people in southeast Michigan can get here in an hour um, or less and they don't have to fight the traffic to go up north and they can make a day trip out of this park and virtually do anything they want to do out here outdoor wise. So. Well I understand that you are famous for your trail system here. You've got how many miles of trails? We've got over 40 miles of trail. And really we're a destination for trail users. Mountain biking is really big. More recently trail running and of course hiking. Cross country skiing in the winter time. We plan on doing a little camping tonight, which should be an adventure because I haven't done that in a while. But uh, how many different campsites you got here? Well, we got three different campgrounds. Crooked Lake Campground was where we're at now. It's 25 sites. We've got a hiking campground at Blind Lake. It has 10 sites. And then we have a modern campground over at Bruin Lake Campground. So you got like modern, then you got rustic, and then you've got wilderness camping? Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's somewhat like wilderness camping. It's, it's pretty unique for Southern Michigan to be able to hike into a campground and hike out again. It's, it's basically, you can't drive to it, but with the property that we have here, you can actually do a loop trail and do a 17 mile trip and camp in between. I haven't so. seen my showers or bathrooms at this campsite yet. Yeah, you're not gonna find them here. Um, this is a rustic campground. It doesn't have electric. It's got basic facilities, it's got a hand pump for water. So and rustic, a vault toilet. So it. rustic is just another word of, way of saying nothing, right? It's yeah, not, there's not much here other than the spot for you to set your tent and a picnic table, campfire, that type of thing. Well, before we hit the trailhead and conquer the great unknown, first things first, time for me to set up the official UTR campsite. Ah, 
perfect. Now, time to strap on the bare essentials and head out. Now, rule number one with hiking is you always take more than you need because you never know. Uh, oh. Oh. I think I gotta rewrite that rule. Well, after a little purging and repacking, we met back up with Chuck to work up our legendary UTR appetites on an awesome hike. You know, I'm actually glad we're camping tonight because after doing, we are doing the full 40 miles, right? Is that all we're doing? 40? Oh, anyway, because I'm sure gonna need, I'm gonna need four hot dogs, eight s'mores, and uh, a good night's sleep. With the sun sinking fast and a few miles notched into our belts, we headed back to camp for brats, s'mores, and a few of my famous super scary campfire ghost stories. And after a great meal, a good scare, and a few hearty laughs, we turned in for the night. Uh, hey, Jim, was that you? No. Eric? Nope. Oh, boy. The next day, we woke refreshed, feeling alive, and ready for another fun-filled day exploring this great state park. So, if you're wondering how far you have to go to find awesome wilderness in southeast lower Michigan, Pinckney Recreation Area, that's how far. Well, now it's time to head up to the UP and see some classic vessels in Hessel. If you like wood, water, and a wonderfully nostalgic event, have I got a happening in Hessel Harbor for you. Now, how do you start this thing? That's not it. Oh, don't. We're at the Le Cheneau Islands Antique Wooden Boat Show, and it happens every summer in August. Classic boat enthusiasts and onlookers come to Hessel from far and wide to witness these little floating yachts from yesteryear. Shirley Jewell is a committee co-chair for this great event, and when it comes to making this classic happening, well, happen, she's a real gem. One thing I didn't get at all until I got here is when you see these boats, you fall in love with them instantly. Right. I mean, and you've been doing this for a while, right? Uh, this is my sixth year as co-chair of the boat show. But the boat show's been for? 39 years, and the Festival of Arts is, is their 40th anniversary. But I've been coming to the show for about 20 years and fell in love with it, and, and the boats, as does everybody else who comes and sees them. They're yeah. incredible. Every boat I see, I want. I know I mean, it. I know. Because, because they don't, I mean, they're making some boats like this, but a lot of these boats are from the 30s, the 40s, some are from the 1800s. Right, we have a number of boats that go back to the late 1800s, early 1900s. And the, what the care that the owners give them is incredible. And you can be a mile away from them, and when you hear their engine, you know it's a woody. It has a completely different sound than any other boat. Now, how many boats are in the show? There, we have 162 that are registered. Wow, and they come from how far away? Uh, they come from Michigan, Ohio, Wisconsin, all over, four, 500, 600 miles. How many people actually come to this event? We generally have between six and 7,000 people that come to the show. To Little Hessel, Michigan. To Little Hessel, Which Michigan. Is, what's, the, what's the population of Hessel? Uh, in the summertime, it's doubled, and in the wintertime, the Lachino Islands, which consists of Cedarville and Hessel, we have a population of probably about 3,000. Wow. It's pretty yeah. incredible. How do you pull off an event this size, then? We have about 300 volunteers. For 39 years, the show has been run strictly by volunteers. We start planning it in January, meet once a month, and the show is put on in August, and we get paid with a crew shirt. Oh, wow, you get a shirt. That's it's right. Like, I've worked this event, and all I got is this lousy right. t-shirt. <laughs> but everybody does it because we love the, the show. We love the community. And all the proceeds from the show go to sponsor the Maritime Museum and the Historical Museum. Not only do these little classic cruisers come in all shapes and sizes, I found out, so do their owners. So did you get your wife with this boat? Uh, if you don't have a wife, you can afford a boat. <laughs> if you have a wife, she better be part of the boat. I have to ask you a quick question, and be honest. Do you own this boat, or does the boat own you? I think the boat owns me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when something, when, this has got to be a labor of love, so when you love something this much, it's almost like a mutual thing. Absolutely. I think we should find you one. Oh, deal. <laughs> you, how much you want for this one? Oh, we could probably work something out. No, I don't think so. <laughs> this fantastic flotilla featured some of the coolest classic and vintage boats I've ever seen. If you want to do some aquatic time travel, treat yourself to the Le Cheneau Islands Antique Wooden Boat Show in Hessel. 
And if you want to have as much fun as we have here on UTR, plan your own UP adventure. All you have to lose is your lack of love for the UP. After that, it's a wonderful and wild ride. Yeehaw! Major Tom to ground control. Can we please turn the gravity back on? Oh, thank you. Well, now it's time to head up to Michigan's Thumb for a place that's paradise literally every summer. But you're probably wondering why I'm wearing this really crazy wild shirt. Believe it or not, it's my mother-in-law's favorite shirt. Hi, Liz. But that's not the main reason I'm wearing it. The main reason is because we're in the cheeseburger in Caseville Festival. <laughs> right, right, high five. Thank you. I'm trying to get it. Thank you. There we go. Take that, Caseville! <laughs> Since 1999, every August, the small town of Caseville becomes a key North Michigan when hordes of people show up to share their love for Jimmy Buffett, cheeseburgers, and gaudy beachwear. Chamber President Steve Lowers invited me to this year's festivities. Now, before we get started, what do I, do I call you? Big cheese, head cheese? Head cheese, head cheese, they've called me, yeah, head cheese. Or... I have to admit, when I got to town, First, I was a little worried because I have the loudest shirt <laughs> in town on until I saw these buses. This is incredible. Is this your bus? This is my bus, yes. How did all this start? We had a uh, lady by the name of Lynn Besnick, and we were looking for somebody to come up with a nice idea to where we could generate some, uh, get some more people in the case folk. And, uh, she came up with a tacky idea of a Jimmy Buffett style theme. So some people say that a woman's to blame for the cheeseburger in Caseville Festival, and I understand that's you. Correct. This was your concept? This is your brainstorm? Yes. At the time, we had a chamber president right. who was just as goofy and wacky as I am, and he challenged me to come up with something that I would like bring her. people into town. Yeah. They told me that just today alone, the parade day is 70,000 people. Probably over the 10 days of the festival now, we average 200,000 through Caseville. In a city that's less than 900 people. Yes. That's absolutely amazing. Yes. So but I understand they invited me up here today because it's Wednesday, and Wednesday is the uh, Parade of Fools. Correct. Coincidence? Okay, well, glad we got that straightened out. Now, most festivals have a parade, but Cheeseburger in Caseville's Parade of Fools takes the cheesecake. It's part Margaritaville, part Mardi Gras, and chock full of fun. Okay, first of all, who does your hair? That would be me. <laughs> oh, it wasn't the Cheeseburglar or anybody? It was not the Cheeseburglar. Well, what do you guys call yourselves? The Cheeseburger Girls. The Cheeseburger Girls. I love it. And you're here too? Party! Very nice. I wouldn't look good in that outfit, though. What's the theme of your float besides the fact that it's terrible? Um, squirrels. That's it. World's worst float. Is this your float? It's all our float, oh, yes. that, Do you live here in Caseville? Yes, I do. What did you guys do before the Cheeseburger Festival here? Uh, Just sit around waiting for it to happen? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> are you in a, in a float? Yes, we are. Is it far from here? It's right over there. Oh, the, that's a that's a porta potty. Now, does Mr. Buffet know yeah. that you guys are doing this? He sure does. Yes, he does. And he's extremely excited about it. When he was playing at DT last year in Michigan, he uh, one of the lyrics in Cheeseburger in Paradise was Cheeseburger in Caseville. And then we thought that was very cool. Well, as you've gathered by now, we at UTR love our festivals. But festivals involving food? <laughs> now you're talking. And I'm telling you, I couldn't think of a better way to ease into the main attraction than a good old-fashioned cheeseburger eating contest. So you almost won the event. You got any advice for me? What should I do? What's your secret? Well, I just dumped it. And when it was in my mouth, I was drinking water to make help me swallow it. So grab one, dunk one, eat one while you're grabbing the next one, you're dunking that one, and it's very confusing. So before we start, you got any advice for me? You will lose. I will lose. Okay, that's good advice. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks for the advice. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? We're filming for a television show today called Under the Radar, Michigan. I'd like you to do me a big favor. I'd like you to scream like crazy when I win, okay? Let's practice right now. Let's practice. Oh, look, I won. Well, apparently, cheeseburger eating contests are more about quantity than quality. But Cheeseburger in Caseville is all about quality, quantity, and gaudy beachwear. This festival's got it all. You gotta come check it out. I lost my shaker of salt. Have you seen it? Yeah, well, we've got plenty here. We've got plenty of salt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that about wraps up our first ever Endless Summer Special. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, get your family. Get out there and enjoy Michigan's warm weather whenever you can. Well, how'd I do, fellas? 
Hello? Fellas? Mommy! Along the way is where we find the unexpected. Along the way is where we take in the scenery, and often where we have the most fun. Sure, along the way can be the place we stop to fill up or grab a bite to eat. But in Michigan, along the way becomes the place we've been longing for. Because enjoying the journey is always pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com.